Welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody to uh, the year 2023. Uh, this is our first live webinar um, that we're having here mainly due to questions about, uh, with questions regarding uh, how to avoid Ponzi schemes and bad investments. My name is... Brian. My name is... Brian. My name is... My name is Munyumba Mutwale, and I'll be taking you through as much of this. And we have Shadrach. Uh, sorry about that. I think we're just. Sorry, Shadrach, we can hear you all clearly, my brother. And we're trying to mute you right now. Right. I think I'll just be waiting for Shadrach to get back on. Uh, but thank you to everyone who has joined us. Uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, it appears that Shadrach might be having a few sound problems uh, today. So today I'm going to be taking you all through a brief presentation. Uh, but give me a shout out uh, in the comment section who you are and where you are joining us from. Who are you and where are you joining us from today? Uh, just give us your name. Um, today is going to be one of those sessions. Uh, regarding today's going to be one of those sessions regarding uh, how to deal with Ponzi schemes and how to deal with bad investments. And I know that some of you think, yes, yes, Mnumba has been targeting some of these people. Yes, I've actually been so because this is what we call wealth theft. There's a lot of wealth theft that has been happening in this country where people who are in a rush to try and get out of poverty or try and get out of a certain tight situation or to try and accelerate their way into another part are really trying, I really found themselves hard. So hello there, Morfit from Kalalushi. Thank you for joining us. Um, hello there, uh, Priska. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, Priska is just tagging a lot of people. Come here. We learn. Yes, people, this is a free webinar to deal with uh, people's struggles with Ponzi schemes and also to deal with uh, bad investments, to try and make sure that you're not losing money instead of growing money, uh, doing regular and stable things to grow money, as opposed to what we end up doing a lot where we end up losing money. So please give us as many of your names. Cecilia, thank you. To uh, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> thank you. Uh, I am joining you from Chilanga myself, people, yes. I am here uh, in Chinanga. Hopefully, we will not be interrupted uh, by the by the dark night, and hopefully, the, hopefully, hopefully, Zesco will power the nation right now and continue to do so. Uh, to everybody, uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we do have some 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 uh, technical issues at the moment, and I will be joined by Shadrach a little bit later if he can. We obviously it has a tough period right now. To everyone, hopefully, you're not facing load shedding yourself, people. Um, uh, we are we are sending thoughts and prayers to everyone because at this time we have to band together as a nation. Um, so yes, please keep keep throwing in your names. We want to get as many of you in here. Let's get started today, people. I am going to show you. So I'm going to take you through a presentation I've put together uh, with a few videos to try and help you, and I'm going to open up to some questions to help you with decision making in these areas. Okay, so please. Uh, to everyone, we've got people from Mansea, Kaludushi, we have mass media. This is all over the country. Um, can everybody hear me clearly, by the way? Uh, one person here is saying they cannot get me clearly. Can everybody hear me? Uh, just trying to quickly check, sound check. Uh, can anyone please just give me a notification if you can hear me? Uh, I know that we had a problem earlier uh, with uh, our brother Shadrach. I think you couldn't hear me, but... I'm just checking if anyone. Okay, so we are getting notifications that people can hear me nice and clear. Thank you very much. For those who cannot, please just check your sound very carefully. Uh, you may find that you've either put us on mute or something. So please get your pens and pads out. If you if you you if you you want to look for something called Ebbinghaus's forgetfulness curve, okay, and Ebbinghaus's forgetfulness curve states if you do not take notes. Within 72 hours, you will forget what you have heard. Okay, I'm going to say this again. If you do not take notes within 72 hours, you will forget what you've heard and what you have learned. 
Okay, so I'm just waiting for Shadrach maybe just to give me the go-ahead uh, to have him come in and join us. If not, uh, but let's get into it as quickly as possible. Let's get started. So this is a session uh, on, this is a session, as we said, on Ponzi schemes, uh, which I will be covering, uh, which I'll be covering here to try and help you on Ponzi schemes and bad investments. Okay, so for everyone here, this is a session on Ponzi schemes and bad investments. So it's wonderful for all of you to be here with us. So let's get started. Um, sorry, let's just remove a little bit of background here. So let's get started here. And everyone has seen my screen shrink. This is basically our starting point. But I want to start with a little bit of a situation that I have exhibited to as many people. And here's a little video to remind people of the situations that we face. Okay, these are the situations that we face. Uh, 10,000 kwacha, you expect 10% of that money that you have invested, or even more than that. There were even, again, bonuses like uh, you deposit 10,000, you receive about 1,500 bonus, of which, it, which was more convincing because people made a lot of withdrawals, of which was uh, another convincing measure because they had to make withdrawals to prove that the platform is legit. Now our complaint is that why is the government allowing these illegal platforms to operate and then scamming us, the youths, us, we are vulnerable youths and we, we want help. Okay, so I wanted everyone to quickly gather into that point. Now, that was a video that was taken out from a lady who unfortunately got scammed uh, out by a group called Shopee Mall. Uh, shopping mall investments, which was allowing people to trade online. And therefore, they were being promised that they could make money, make a lot of profit, everything. And those people just packed up and took the money, okay? Uh, which is what happens. People were unfortunately given promises of making money with very little put in, very little to do, but there was just all this free money lying around for you to just make money easily and just tons and tons of money easily without even ever having to break a sweat. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of people got money taken from them. That was the third major scam of last year. Uh, last year, there was Guapini, there was, uh, there was Go Live, and then there was Shopee Mall as well, where the vulnerable people, and, and unfortunately, that's how people become. When they get robbed and scammed, they become vulnerable youth. Uh, sorry, Shadrach, I don't know if you're here with us. Or uh, I think we'll just leave him for the meantime. Um, sorry, sorry, Shadrach, are you here with us now? Yes, the thing is, you know, uh, we have we have no power, so network is bad. But yeah. Oh, okay, no, Shadrach will join us so when he, when he has found a docking place. No. Um, yeah. Oh no, what is that I'm going to the main station now. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. No, we'll, we'll wait. We'll yeah, wait for you to settle, and then we'll 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 get you then. All right. So we'll get Shadrach back when he has settled. So um, the the point was there was a lot of people who unfortunately got swindled and scammed at that point where uh, they thought there was a lot of free money, and it was a lot of these scams that were coming about last year. And there are a lot of things that are p pitching up that are very similar to them. So today I want to take you through bad investments and outright Ponzi schemes and how to spot them. I want you to be able to spot them and I want you to be able to stop yourself also when you feel like you're getting pulled into one because that's usually what happens to a lot of people. There's a lot of excitement and you feel like you also get pulled into a, a, a scam as well. Um, so that's one thing I just want everyone to try and pay attention to uh, when it comes to this. So let me just open up my presentation uh, as I know, but please if anything, I would like to hear from you. What are your expectations from as many of you as possible as you are in here? Please feel free uh, to give me your expectation. Where uh, give me your give me your expectations of what you expect from today's webinar, uh, and as I try and get Shadrach back in. So let me just give him a heads up. So yes, give me your expectations of what you expect coming in from this webinar today. So thank you very much to everyone. Let's go through, as I said, let's start with the presentation from today. Right, so this is an old one that we have here. So I'm gonna take you through financial Ponzi schemes and bad investments. And I am your investment advisor, Munyumbo Mutwale. Uh, so let's go through this from the basic. Now, I wanna start with this. What are the three biggest 
risks to wealth. Sorry, the logo just seems to be blocking the terminology wealth here. But your three biggest risks to wealth, uh, which I just wanted to show you quickly, are poor investments. The first one is consuming all your investments. Okay, so that's your first one. Consuming all your investments, consuming all your money. Okay, poor savings rates and withdrawing money out of investing. That's the first reason why people struggle to build wealth. The second one is inflation. They are very excessively conservative. They keep too much money in cash uh, and they keep too much money in cash format uh, and not enough in asset format. And as a result, what tends to happen to a lot of them is that they find themselves always subject to inflation because they are afraid to put their money in any form of assets. They don't factor in uh, investment. They don't factor in uh, inflation in their investments. So whenever they see rate of return, they don't factor in infl inflation. And they also keep, uh, they're also overly exposed to non-cash flow generating assets. Those are two, those are, that's point number two. And the third biggest risk is the one we're going to focus on today, taking excessive risk. Okay. And often this happens because of poor diversification, a lot of speculation. In other words, you're looking at speculative gains on money more than you're looking at actual cash flow generated. You're looking at uh, you're overly exposed to exotic assets or things that have not been tested yet or tried yet. You're investing because of hype and you're trying to get rich in a very short space of time. So I want you to look very carefully at that third one of excessive risk where we look at poorly diversified because most people get scammed, go all in. They take all their money and they dump it into this thing because they've heard it makes money very quickly. It's highly speculative in the way it operates and it's overly exposed. It's, it's an exotic asset more than it is. Uh, and it's mainly they're mainly drawn in there to the hype. Uh, and it's a very short term form of thinking. So that's the first part I want you to look at. So what is a Ponzi scheme? This is a lesson I want as many people to try and capture. What is a Ponzi scheme? And the first thing I want to do is I want to define a Ponzi scheme is a scheme that uh, is, a, is an investment fraud that pays existing customers using money collected from new investors. Okay, so people that put money in are just paying the people who are already there. That's a Ponzi scheme. And the organizers often draw people in with high returns, with very little risk. They'll always tell you, you can make a lot of money. You don't have to do anything. Just make when you start hearing that, those are the red flags. Okay, when you start hearing a lot for nothing, that's where you start, the red flags should start going on. So instead, what they're doing is instead of actually investing in this actual activity, they're just taking their money and they're giving it to somebody else. So Ponzi schemes require a constant flow of cash because once that constant flow dies, that Ponzi scheme dies because it can't pay its new employees because there's no actual activity underneath. And when it becomes very hard to recruit new investors, uh, the thing usually collapses. That's usually where it happens. So what often kills the Ponzi scheme is its growth. Uh, the smaller it stays, the easier it can actually stay alive. But it, it, the problem is it requires more new people coming in than people it's paying out. So it needs to grow to survive, but that very growth is what kills it. So that's, the, that's what you need to understand with Ponzi schemes. That's why time is always what will tell when it comes to these things. But time is always the killer because it always has to seek growth. So I'm going to tell you two stories with Ponzi schemes, two of the most famous ones ever. One, how Ponzi schemes get their name, and two, the most famous and biggest Ponzi scheme in history, so that you understand these things before I break down the anatomy of a Ponzi scheme for you. The first one is the story of Charles Ponzi. Now, Charles Ponzi was an Italian immigrant who came into the U.S. in the early 1900s. So he had this deal where he could buy Italian stamps, okay? Uh, then he would bank on Italian, the Ita he would be able to trade those stamps back for lira, now, he was betting that the currency uh, of the, the, the lira itself would get stronger. Once it got stronger, then he would sell the stamps back for lira, liquidate them back into dollars, and make profits trading currency. Because by this time, there was no currency trading that he was into at that time. He was doing stamps. So he would buy stamps worth lira, say the price of the lira would go up, then the, 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 he would then sell those stamps, surrender the lira, and then bang, he's actually made money in dollars. So he was now, he was doing that himself 
Then he promised other people. He convinced his friends and his relatives uh, that he could actually promise to pay them 10% a month or 50% in 45 days. Okay, 50% in 45 days or 100% in half a year. That's what he was offering to a lot of people. Uh, and, and word got around very quickly. And then this is the early 1900s. Charles Ponzi collects about 9 to $15 million from people. Now, what he didn't anticipate was, one, some people now would have thought, oh, this is wonderful. Let me keep investing more and more and more. Now he was actually getting a lot of these people coming in who wanted to invest for long periods of time because they wanted to keep collecting their interest. Now, he wasn't making interest from actually trading. He was making interest by getting people to come in. So now he's got all these long-term investors sticking around. The second one now was that the, he did not calculate the amount of money some of these people were starting to give him. That's a large amount. $9 million today's terms, people, that's like 50, 60 times. This man was basically holding hundreds of millions of dollars just right there. And then at the same time, he, he also didn't factor in one day the government would stop paying cash for surrendered stamps. That's another thing that hit him. So one of the things you'll start to notice about Ponzi schemes is there's often a huge market event, something like the government yeah. stops or there's a there's a stop in the market. Something happens that disrupts that business model and exposes it that the whole time it's actually been a fraud. OK, so usually there's a huge market failure that will actually shake that thing. And you'll see and I'll show you even in the second story. Now, rumors spread that Charles Ponzi was actually bankrupt. And investors demanded their money back. The exponential cash flow that was needed to maintain was being seized. Because now, now people are like, hey, we want our money back. They weren't bringing money anymore. They were asking for it back. So now he didn't have it. So he did use some yeah. of his hustle techniques. And he got about 4 to $5 million. And he managed to pay people back. But eventually, Charles Ponzi got arrested, convicted, sentenced. And upon release, he was deported back to Italy. So this is the story about where the Ponzi scheme, the name Ponzi, scheme actually comes from okay so the first thing you can see is it's a guy who started with something legit it was actually legitimate but the returns he was promising to attract people were not in line with the activity that was being done so as a result he was re he was relying on money flowing in to be able to pay money out you got to be careful that's the trick mechanism right there the next thing, the next big story is one I think we all should know. This is Bernie Madoff. Okay, Bernie Madoff is the is basically the king of all crooks in the world. Uh, people are still crying to this day. Well, after his 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 crookery, but, uh, Bernard Lawrence Madoff, Bernie Madoff, was an American financier who executed the largest Ponzi scheme in history, defrauding thousands of of investors of tens of billions of dollars over a 17-year period, some even suspect 30 years. But before he was actually a Ponzi, before he was in a Ponzi scheme, he and his brother began to build electronic trading capabilities in the early 90s. He was one of the first guys. So he was a legitimate guy, okay, to the point where his business was actually making $100 million a year just in, in the 1980s. So Bernie Madoff didn't start off a crook. He was actually a legitimate trader. People trusted him. He even became the chairperson of the NASDAQ in 1990, 1991, 1993. So there was legitimacy here. Uh, and you'll notice that most of these guys, there's a legitimate story at the beginning. It's, it's, the, it's the fact that it just stops making sense halfway. Now, Madoff later promoted his Ponzi scheme as an investment called a split strike conversion, which he utilized basically 100 uh, ownership of uh, S&P 100 stocks. And then he started falsifying trading activity. So what he was telling people was invest in deposit with me as a broker. Then I'm going to go and invest. He was falsifying the records that he was trading. But what he was actually doing was chewing the money. And then he would now sell, tell people, I bought stocks with it and the stocks have moved this much and your accounts are looking like this. And he kept on falsifying records to then represent the yield. So he used the trading records that he would find. Now, people believed Bernie Madoff because he was the number one trader before. This guy was a good guy. He was really good at what he did. So th there was there's always some form of truth to these things. Charles Ponzi was starting with stamps at the beginning. It's when they expand, when these things change. Now, um, in 2008, here's the big market event. You have the global financial crisis and investors wanted to withdraw their money from Bernie Madoff and that exposed his illiquidity. And Madoff, basically at the end of the day, found out that he had taken $50 billion 
from people, over 4,800 clients. Investigators suspect he's actually been running this fraud from the 80s. But it's just that it got really big in the 90s and 2000s when the whole stock market was booming and nobody noticed. And that's what happened. So you're already starting to see when it comes to this is it'll often run well until this big exogenous shock event hits it. Whether it's the government stop, stop, stops accepting stamps or whether it's um, sorry, the government stops accepting stamps or whether the global credit crunch happens, but something exogenous will come and hit that point. And then all of a sudden it now shows that this is an illiquid thing and it was never going to be able to hold itself. This has happened in many times. It's happened in many cases. So these are just some things that you want to try and pay attention to. And I've seen similar things uh, may not actually just be Ponzi schemes, but poorly structured financial, financial instruments that have led to serious problems uh, in the markets. Right. So the anatomy of a Ponzi scheme. Let's break down what the anatomy of a Ponzi scheme actually is so that you understand it. Right. There are seven red flags you should look for when it comes to a Ponzi scheme. Please write these down, people. It's very critical that you write these down. They are seven red flags that I want as many of you to watch out for when it comes to Ponzi schemes. One, a guaranteed promise of high returns for nothing. There is no such thing. You need to stop thinking this. This is dangerous behavior. And this is why we keep having issues. Because you all, for some reason, so many people have bought into this illusion that money is lying around on trees waiting for you to pluck it like a monkey does fruits. You will be tricked <laughs> like one. Okay, that's very dangerous. Everything that gives you a return has risk built into it. So when somebody's offering you 100% in six months, that's 100% of risk that you're taking in six months. Okay, the higher exactly. the risk, the higher that return, the higher the risk. There's no such thing. Okay, use the bond market as your baseline. If the bond market is offering you 15% in a year and somebody's offering you 100% in six months, that thing is six, seven times more risky than the bond market. That's exactly yeah. what it's trying to tell you. Okay, so use the bond market, which is basically your low risk barometer to be able to say, okay, people, whatever this person's offering, that's the level of risk we're actually taking. So that's one of the reasons I teach people bonds as well, so that you get to look at these things for what they are. They are risks built into them. Uh, and bonds give you that basic idea or bonds and treasury bills will give you that baseline of what is the risk. So anything above 15%, for example, a year of return, that is already telling you that there's risk. That's the, that's the amount of risk now that's being baked in because that's called risk compensation. Because when you're investing, you're only investing for two reasons, to cover inflation and to compensate for risk. Those are the two exactly. reasons why you're given a return on your investment. It's inflation cover and risk compensation. So anything yeah. above that risk-free rate, that's what we call the 364-day treasury bill. We, we deem it the risk-free rate or at least the lowest risk rate. From there onwards, there is risk. So when you are being promised that there's nothing, there is a lot. Okay, that is the reality of the risks that you're taking. The second one is a constant flow of returns regardless of market conditions. People, nobody yeah. makes money regardless of the, the markets. No, and unless it is a government bond, that's the only thing that does that. And the reason I keep telling you people this is the government does this because they are capable of printing money if they have to, and they collect taxes. No one else in the economy does this. No one collects taxes. So to offer you yeah. a high rate of return <laughs> without, without risk <laughs> consistently, even in downturns, that's very no. difficult. Okay. No. Assets reflect the economic environment. That's one thing you have to understand. So if the assets are not reflecting the economic environment, you're in a dangerous situation. Okay, Most of the time, you're in a very dangerous situation. Even, even, even things like plots or flats. When the economy is going bad, your tenants stop paying you. Your tenants start defaulting on rent. That is the reflectiveness of assets to the economy. The third one, is that investments that are not registered with regulators. That is often a huge red flag. They should at least either be affiliated, registered. Who is the regulator that if something goes wrong, I can tell them about it? 
The reason why that young lady was busy talking about being scammed is because no one was regulating those people. She never asked that question, who do I go to? That's why she's asking for the government to step in. Those are questions you're supposed to ask before you get invested. Before, okay, not after, before. The regulator is there for you, the consumer. So you, the consumer, must say, if these people are not regulated, I can't give them too much of my money, okay? You can experiment, but do not throw too much. Are they in a sandbox? Do they have audited financials? Audited financials, at least you can now go to the auditor and say, but you audited these people and said it was okay. So what was what's wrong with you? You see, when there's an auditor involved, there's already a regulator involved as well. So look for a seal of regulatory approval or look for audited financials or preferably both. Okay, three to five years of audited financials and regulatory approval, that gives you a little bit of comfort. That doesn't exempt it from being a bad investment. It just gives you a little bit of comfort. The fourth one is the investment strategies are secret or described as too complex. If it becomes too yeah. complicated to explain how this thing makes money, <laughs> because anything <laughs> you put money in, <laughs> you need to ask yourself, how do these people remember, make money? Remember, yeah, remember, yes. remember, I think that, that, that point, that, that's the part we must emphasize on so much. But because, you know, we have people that are desperate. They don't ask questions. All they say, if I put, if I put 25,000, 35,000, 45, how much do I get? You get 1.5, 1.6. How on earth do you get that? Do you know how long it takes to make a million out of 25,000 or 35 or 45? Do you know how long it takes? Why should it take you less? Don't even know how is your money multiplying? True. Who, what interest rate is it multiplying at? Where is the investment you're going to put my money? Get there, oh, what you to ask? What? <laughs> no, but before we get there, how is this thing making money? Is the, the number one question. question. How, How is you it making money? money? Why my money? Because if you yeah. come to me, I tell you, I want to invest with you, and I tell somebody I want to invest with you, I should show you how your money is multiplying. I should show you the risk. I should show you all the angles. But this thing, it's like you, you just lazy, you get your money and you go to sleep. Really? Is that how you make money? Yes, mm -hmm. money just making it stop. You don't know how it's multiplying from 25, 35 to 1.5 million. Are you for real right now? That's where yeah. you get, and that's where you get robbed. Yeah, no, it's true. I thank you. Yeah, no, that and that's the point. Where where you do not know if the thing becomes too complicated. You see, like I've told people with a bond, the government collects tax money or they print money and they pay. That's where it comes from. Yeah. It's the government who pays the bond. So if you if you look at a business, whether it's a stock, whatever it is, ask the question, you, how are you making money with this? And can I see a track record? Look at their audited financials and their annual reports. Can they show you how they've been making money for a long period of time, just like this? And how an auditor has been through it and said, in my opinion, this is fine. The audit opinion even says this is fine. Being, 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 being a, an accountant, it's also an auditor. I want to tell you guys that it is also important that you ask them, can I, who, which firm audit your financial statements? Because these auditors can even show you fake audited financial statements. So ask for the firm that audits them. But you can go and find out from the actual firm. Is the firm yeah. registered? When was this firm registered? Because they are this kind of dongolistic auditing firms that are hungry. They are willing to get anything. Yeah, just to, to, to fill their stomach. They are willing to to and to, you know, to overlook important ethical issues just to get some little coins. So find out how long has this firm been in the, in existence? When was it registered? So that you can understand the kind of uh, you know in uh, you know uh, person you are dealing with. But people don't ask questions. Or they say, if I put twenty five thousand and they or thirty five or forty five, I'm gonna get one point five million. Oh, that's nice, guys. One point five million, really? Just like that. No, yeah. Why should somebody work so hard for you for little money? Tell me. Why should somebody work so hard to make you rich? Why? No, it's true. And and that's and that's those are questions people need to ask. Why is somebody just giving me money for nothing? Yeah, and, and I'm going to Why? answer these questions, especially at the end, when I'm gonna now talk about the person who's being swindled.
But other questions yeah. that people need to ask, and I think there, there are some questions that I'm going to just grab into very quickly after this, is that investment strategies are, as I said, investment strategies are too complex. Clients are not allowed to view official paperwork for their investment. That sometimes happens. Sometimes they'll give you fraudulent ones, but they won't give you official paperwork. The clients often find it difficult to remove their money, especially when the scheme grows to a certain level. And continuous offerings are, they're, off, they're constantly offering new securities. People, unless something is registered and licensed, every time they, if somebody keeps offering new securities, and securities is any financial instrument that you keep trading or you keep buying into or getting, and something is not registered, you know, there, there's something you've got to be very fishy of. Okay, there, there's always a reason. Why are these people constantly issuing new securities? Can they handle the capacity? Because every new security is a liability. Okay, I want you to remember that every single new security that is issued is a liability. So that's this is that this is point number one. I just want everyone to try and now gather. Now, let me just quickly gather a, a question um, here. Just a few questions here that I will actually ask, uh, and I will actually gather from, I'll, I'll get some of the questions from the end here, uh, the ones that you're putting in the comment section. So please continue to put the questions in the comment section. I will go through some of these questions towards the end. Now let's go, get into uh, some of the four identifiers that Bank of Zambia put uh, for Ponzi schemes. This is, a, this is an announcement Bank of Zambia actually made about the four key identifiers of Ponzi schemes. And one is they are developed to make quick and easy money by alluring investors with supernatural returns in a short space of time. Okay, very high rates. So people will say, what is a high interest rate? A high interest rate always use a 365-day treasury bill as the benchmark. And then now look at it compared to that. If the government's saying we're paying 15% a year and someone's saying I'm paying you 15% a minute, perhaps, perhaps take a consideration that that's a very dangerous act. That's a very high return. Okay. People who are saying, give me a thousand, I'll give you 10,000 in 24 hours. And that's a serious situation. People, that, that's what you need to look at. The second one is the returns cannot be supported by realistic economic activity. Okay. Listen to me very carefully. It is not realistic. Okay, I'll give you an example. I know that it may sound like picking on them, but I'm sorry, people, this is the reality. I mean, it's farm contracts. Somebody was talking about on livestock, you can make 30, you put in 35 and get 1.5 million back. I have talked to people in that space, the actual cattle ranchers and people, and they're saying, how, when cows give birth once every two years, how do you, when you only double the herd every two years, okay, each cow, each, each female cow, and then on top of that, these cows are only putting out about a hundred. What's a day? They're putting out more men than they are women. So when 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 there are more male cow cattle being born than female, the herd size starts declining over time. So if somebody's only being offered a doubling of their herd size every two to four years in a proper cow in a proper ranching system, then how is somebody taking thirty five thousand and turning it into one point five million? How is this happening? So these are, you have to ask the questions. That's why I always say, when you're looking at some of these contracts, go open up Zambiv's financial books. Go and open them and say, is, but are these two tallying? If, if you want to see somebody's offering you a chicken's contract, saying you, they're going to quadruple your money or quintuple or 10x your money in six months, go and sit down with the person who grows chickens in your back in their backyard next to you. Ask them, yeah. is this, does this tally? Are you this rich? They'll look at you and they'll say, no, this is not making sense. So yeah. is the return being offered to you more uh, uh, supported by realistic, realistic, not hypothetical where somebody is drawing math for you. Re go and speak to somebody actually in that industry. Just, just yeah. to help you know what is realistic. You know, there's something that God has given us. People, don't ignore that inner, inner voice. There's always a feeling when something's not right. A lot of people ignore it, right? You can feel that there's something wrong here, but you choose to ignore that feeling. Come on, guys. Sometimes use your intuition. God gives you those emotions for a reason, to protect you from God's stars. But a lot of people remember when they see something not realistic, but they, you know, they, they are doubting. They're still saying, no, but anyway, maybe because uh, there is the issue, remember, on realistic. 
in Zambia, we have a lot of dumb celebrities, people that can't understand anything, or they, they know it's being famous, all right? They can't think. A lot of hungry celebrities who are willing to go and take pictures with court stars to lure their followers. As a celebrity or as somebody who has a, a page, you have the responsibility to protect your followers. Don't go and take pictures and necessarily with people who we don't even know they are making money. Because there are people who trust celebrities. When they see a celebrity involved, they trust, even though it's not realistic. And that's the problem we have in this country. We have a lot of damn celebrities who can't think, all right? All they are willing to do, to do anything just to be famous and that, you know, just get, let me just be honest with you, but it's so frustrating. I keep seeing celebrities, you know, taking pictures with four stars. They are deceiving their followers. This thing is not making any logical sense. There's no way I'm going to multiply your 15,000 kwacha into 1.5 million. Why should I work so hard for you? Why? But why can't I do it for myself? Why can't I do it for myself? Why can't I do it for you? Why? Uh, anyway, you know what, Shadrach, let me just leave. That one, I, uh, we'll, get to, we'll get to that point. But <laughs> the, the other thing I just wanted to give as many people here is the scheme often depends on future subscribers to pay the existing ones. Okay, so without new subscribers, it, it collapses. And yeah. so the best test is, have you seen their financials and seen how they performed with less people putting money in? If the yeah. thing has not collapsed when people are, when the number of people putting money in is declining, then possibly you've got something legit. But if it's starting, if it's struggling, the moment it falters on number of people coming in, then you've got a serious problem here. Then continued existence of the scheme depends on recruitment. If they're very strong on recruitment more than they are on the activity, if they're selling their, their, their contracts and securities more than they're selling their actual services, then there's an issue here. Okay, that's one thing you have to pay attention to, or the products of their services. Where's the marketing that happens of the actual products and services? Are they more aggressive on getting you in there, or are they more aggressive on actually selling their products? That's what you need to pay attention to when dealing with this. Now, let's look at the traits of a person who gets swindled. Okay, this is a very important uh, uh, subject for as many of you to look at. Let's look at the traits of a swindle victim. And a swindle victim, or a mark, as they like to call you, is one who is often greedy or gullible. All right? Greedy or gullible. You're trying to make money at a very fast, fast pace. All right? That's often what makes you a perfect mark. You are addicted to excitement of participating in something exclusive or status driven. So people are playing on your ego. They are playing on your insecurity. So therefore, you will do anything to be part of these exclusive circles or anything. And therefore, you end up getting swindled to get there. You are in a rush and you do not do your homework. That's when you are the perfect mark. Okay. When you are so blinded by having a personal need and you buy into a personal relationship with the schema. So as Shadrach has talked about, even celebrity, sometimes you may find somebody has lured you into this thing because you've bought into a relationship with that person as opposed to the actual product and what it's good for or what the investment yeah. is good for. And you've allowed personal relationships or, or celebrity relationships to then buy into the credibility of that product. You still need to do your research on that thing. OK, it doesn't matter. Even if it's me coming in front of you, it doesn't matter. It's the product that you've got to look at OK, thoroughly. And you've got to learn it carefully and enter slowly. Even when you have learned, you still enter slowly and carefully and you don't go all in ever. Full stop. OK, so these are the marks of a, of a victim. The, the, they often rush and they pour everything they have in, including borrowing their parents money, putting their parents lots of land on on title and then borrowing against it just to go and put money in that in hopes that they'll be able to make money and pay it back that gambling mentality. So these are the main traits that we're looking at in terms of a perfect mark. So this is Ponzi scheme 101. OK, so I want to talk. On the second part, okay, but before I get in there, I want to show you a video very quickly from a TV show called Hustle. Uh, and it was a beautiful TV show where they actually took four British grifters, four guys from England who were, who were basically stealing from people 
and teaching you how they were doing this. Now, this wasn't a real; sh it wasn't not reality. But obviously, this is a this is it's a it's a fictional show. But I want you to listen to the end. This is the end of the show where they talk about how they select people, how they select marks. Okay, That's so let's try and let's let's put this up now. This is Michael Stone talking. Dirty word. All it stood for was confidence. And what's so bad about that? But what we do, we can't do without greed. Take Madani Wasim, for instance. Now, he could buy his stocks and his shares just like everyone else. Pay the same price, take the same risk. If he did, there's no way we could touch him. Honestly, do you think we could do what we do if he wasn't looking for an edge? If he wasn't looking for something that gave him an unfair advantage over everyone else? No. It's his greed that makes him fair game. What we do is feed that greed. I hope you've picked up a few things along the way. If something seems too good to be true, it almost certainly is. Always look a gift horse in the mouth, unless you don't much care whether it has teeth or not. And remember, you can't cheat an honest man. So, if you bend the rules to make some easy money, you deserve what you get. Long before con That's basically, that's, that's the, that was the end of a clip from a TV show called Hustle. Um, and their whole job was actually just go crooking very rich people who were corrupt. They were actually going after corrupt people, but they were always offering them something. So really always look at that very carefully. Um, so I want to take a few questions, Shadrach, if you've got any comments, but I want to take a few questions from people before I go into uh, discovering a mania, how to avoid also a mania, because that's another thing that people uh, get hit a lot with. Um, so I'm just going to take a few comments here. Sorry, Shad, go ahead. So guys, what I want to comment on here is if you heard the most important word in that video was greedy. Greedy people don't want to wait. They want everything given to them on a super platter. They, they have no interest in waiting for anything in their life. A greedy person is willing to do whatever it takes, including eating their own children just to have money. And that's one thing these guys look for in people. So guys, Learn to work for yourself. Avoid the free things too much. There's a reason why I discourage people and I say I don't I don't really do a lot of free stuff because I, I have developed a work ethic and I want to stick by it. A lot of people will have free things, free too much free things are the ones who are more likely to be swindled. Like you said, you said it is difficult to swindle an honest man. People that believe in a good work ethic, people that Remember, can you hear me? Guys, tell me, yeah, um, is this news break? Oh, fine. No, so I can said, hear, can hear clear. What's on is people that don't want to work, people that are greedy. An honest person is difficult to be seen because an honest person knows how to make money genuinely. They are going to say, oh, how would you give me 1.5 million out of 15,000? But out of 45,000, but how do you multiply it? You know, you're asking sensible questions, all right? Now, the problem that we have here is about the people being printed in number. They believe anybody who is a celebrity. Guys, we have a lot of dumb and guy celebrities in this country. If there's a country in Africa where we have a lot of people that, that just can't ask sensible questions, it's Zambia. Yeah. Celebrities go yeah. and check it. It's scammers. Scammers, when you are a celebrity, I think, uh, let me just say this number. When you are a celebrity or you, you have a platform and you have an audience, you have a responsibility to do what is called due diligence before you can involve yourself with anybody. Don't just get the money for advertisement. No. Find out who are these people I'm dealing with. When were they registered? Because a new registered company, where are they going to get the millions of quarters that are trading around in, in, in the market? Where is your track record? Celebrities don't ask. All they want is to, to, to look famous and to make money out of advertisement. But they don't ask questions for their followers' sake. And because some followers are so gullible, they believe anything that comes out of the mouth of the celebrity. What do they do? They say, what? That celebrity is respected. He was there. She was there. Uh, it's genuine. No, it's not genuine. These guys want money. They are paid to, to feature those pictures. They don't care about you who follow them. They care about their stomach. So it's your job to do due diligence. Don't be greedy. Don't be lazy. Don't be naive. There is no an investment that is genuine that has got no logical explanation. 
every investment has a logical expense. Guys, I do investment appraisal myself. For organizations. We do Munumba has that we do that every single day. There's no logical investment. Every logical investment has got a logical explanation. How the is going to multiply? What are the risks involved? How do we mitigate the risk? How do we avoid this? Every investment is German. But while you see they tell you just pay us the money, we'll do all the debt work. Just know it is come. Why should somebody work so hard to make you rich? That's the question you have to ask yourself every single time. Why should somebody work so hard to make you rich? Why? Yet, if yet I banks can only give you 7%. Five, uh, quarter. If I can change 35,000 quarter, 45,000 quarter, 50,000 quarter, and 2, 1.5 million for you, why shouldn't I do it for my mother? Yeah. Why should I do it for you? Who are you? For me to just wake up in the man, work so hard day and night to make you a millionaire. Why? Guys, these are the questions we must be able to ask these people. <coughs> ask. If, 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 if you, are, you want to invest, Jeremy, real investments take time. There's hard work. There's transparency. You can see how your money is. There are real people doing business. There's a track record. You can see how people are trading. So don't just believe things because somebody's famous or somebody, you know, Promises you, or they are take, they, some, some of these guys are very calculative, but they even take photos for teachers. They are no, very they calculated, uh, no, they, they, they would be involved a politician, a famous person, and you, you are easily convinced because you trust these people. So, guys, even, even you politicians and famous people, please don't just take photos. Can you do your due diligence before you can accept a due to advertise anything? Please do that. People are being swindled every single day because of dumb celebrities what you have in this country. Dumb people just can't do calculations. So, simple math. How do you send a 25,000 1.5 million? And the celebrities, they are taking photos. For what? No, but, okay, but, 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 no, but we, we, and, and we're going to address how to, uh, just for everybody here, by the end of this session, we're also going to address what are the things you should be looking out for in yourself in terms of what is convincing you. What is it that's convincing you so that you can do this? Uh, I'm going to give you a model for everyone to utilize called the six steps to a yes so that you can also assess why did I say yes to this deal? Like you should be able to ask the question, why did I say yes to this investment? Why did I say yes to this? If there, uh, there should be a reason uh, and if it's if it's these six reasons and nothing to do with the actual investment, then you're most likely just walking into a graft. That's probably what's happening. So I want to help you people also equip yourself so that you can stop following the hype. Because if you don't have a way of making decisions, you're going to have this be problematic. But I just want to take a few of these questions. Um, Shadrach, uh, there's somebody named Shadrach uh, Pax, is it Paxna? Uh, who has said, what of Sam Bankman Fried and Elizabeth Holmes? Are they fraudsters? Yes, yes. Those two are at perfect examples of fraudsters. Okay, they took people's money and used them for things. Uh, and no, it had nothing to do with the actual business. It started legit. These are Ponzi schemes right there. Those ones are Ponzi schemes. Uh, I'm not even going to hide from that fact. Uh, so other people here, in the comments here, Shadrach, people are saying that they are victims of this stuff. There are people who are even admitting that they've yeah. almost been victims. Some have been victims, so it's right there. Uh, somebody has I'm asked quite a decent careless. question. Uh, Fred, Fred, mm -hmm. uh, Fr uh, sorry, f uh, few days in Somalia has said yeah. Shadrach uh, and uh, isn't Napsa also a Ponzi scheme? Uh, reason being, they are trying to get rid of the lump sum payment because they are depending on monthly contributions to be paying monthly payments. What is your take, Mr. Mutwale? See clarity. Okay, so when it comes to NAPSA, all right, they are, they, they is, they, at a certain point, social security funds, even in America, even in Europe, are struggling with this thing where they are depending on money coming in to pay the beneficiaries, such yeah. like, let's say, Medicaid yeah. in America. It is, it is effectively, and, and even some of the senators have come out and said, this thing is a Ponzi scheme now. Because it's reliant on yeah. the inflows to pay out the outflows because the assets inside are not enough to handle the payments going out. NAPSA right now yeah. is not in that state. When you look at the financial state no. of NAPSA, they do not have more people yeah. they're paying out than money flowing in. That's not the situation. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. given time, if they don't manage this properly, that is a risk that is likely to materialize. 
and then it does become a Ponzi scheme. That's that's the reality of these things, but it's not there yet. Okay, it's still getting much more cash coming in than there are payments going out, and you'll just have to look at their financials for that. Now, one of the things NAP says guilty of is not publishing its financials in time. It's guilty of that. And I've been complaining multiple times that NAPSA is always behind on its financial statements and they need every to fix themselves. Time, but they are okay? behind every They time. are way behind. They make everyone else publish financial statements and NAPSA is way behind on its financial statements. So for it to clean its name, it needs to start learning to publish its financial statements far earlier than the rest of the pension system, which actually publishes financial statements in a much better way. Now... Also, that is the biggest risk with something called a defined benefit scheme. It's usually a risk yeah. that you can see with it. This is why defined benefit schemes are not good. They are horrible schemes because they do fall victim to becoming Ponzi schemes at one point. Because they, the, the, the defined benefit is where we give you a pension benefit based not on how much money you've put in or how much money is there, but based on some other arbitrary number like your final salary or something like that. That is where uh, you uh, often find uh, these problems uh, come uh, from. Your, your, your final salary is used a lot. Because yeah, there on uh, what, 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 what happens is that uh, you are promised a fixed payment on retirement. And this, this is what we see of, in the recent, recent past, people are, are preparing to go for the defined contribution scheme because now people yeah. want to get variable in their money. But now with yeah. the defined contribution, even more riskier, you're even more likely to become a desperate because even after, at the end of the day, they won't just wake up one day because we don't give you all the money. That's, that's why we have the but, but so far, to, to be honest, guys, with NAPSA, I think NAPSA is in a better stand as, as, as of today. I think NAPSA is doing, is doing fine, even though, you know, risk may, as we, 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 we said, if they don't play their games well, they may be huge risk coming through. But for now, guys, NAPSA is the biggest investor in this country, one of the biggest investors, and, you know, if you look at their businesses, they are legitimate businesses. These are not Ponzi schemes, no. These are guys that have been dead in this country and they, they, they have a track record. But even when that, that is the case, risk could be there. And risk have been already been uh, identified so far. Like I was saying, we, we, are, we are seeing those risks uh, coming up in, in the, if they don't play their game. I hope they are, they are doing the best they can to, just to make sure that they don't, they don't fall into this category. Because, you know, when you depend on new members or on members to contribute or to pay somebody else, it becomes a problem. Yeah, and this is this is this is what the problem I have with these schemes for for farmers and the livestock because they depend more on new members. They it's, yeah. a, it's like they, they don't have a business. All business they have is to make you tell your friend about them to come and put money with them. But yeah. what why don't they show you more of what they do to multiply the money? They show you more of why you should go and tell your friend about it. If I'm gonna bring you into my portfolio, I, I want you to come and invest with me. I have to explain to you. Here's how the money is going to multiply. I give you the, the, the logical explanation for your money so that you know exactly what's going to happen to your money, but these guys don't do that. So I, I think that, that's a very unique question. But, like but even, to, but even, even, even for NAPSA, let me just also state, yeah. about 20 billion, NAPSA is about 33 to about 40 billion kwacha. Total assets are being held there. About 20 billion of that is just government bonds. So already, you know, yeah. you know where the money is coming from. NAPSA basically makes yeah. about one point one to two billion kwacha in government coupon payments on an annual basis. So already, there's about two billion kwacha of coupon payments yeah. coming into NAPSA, which it can use to pay those retirees. And in fact, that's how they structure it. Once they've structured and your they pension, the they actually NAPSA. take yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 they take the actual thing. They take the the bond coupons. In fact, when you when you actually are time for you to claim a pension, what these guys effectively do is they just go and take that money, go and buy a 15-year bond and pay you using the coupons until you pass away. That's yeah. how they operate. That's how their business works. <laughs> but the problem is they yeah, haven't explained this to people in, in reality. So this is where I think people can yeah. easily think that thing. And then secondly, the other problem is people confuse NAPSA for public pension, public service pension, yes. and, and what's yeah. it, local superannuation fund and national provident fund. These three yeah. were bankrupt. That's the problem. These three pension funds were bankrupt. That's why these pension funds have been a problem.
So you need to actually take, you need to separate NAPSA from those ones because whenever people talk about pension, they just think everything is one pension yeah. scheme. No, in Zambia, yeah. there are four pension schemes that were run by the GAP. Four. There's National Provident Fund, NAPSA, Na Local Superannuation, and Public Service Pension. These are four separate schemes. This one has yeah. been in deficit, Public Service Pension. Local Superannuation, my goodness, that thing is still having problems. Okay, LASF has been Provident having problems for how long? Provident oh Fund God. took its problems and gave oh. its problems to NAPSA. So that's where the problem is coming. So what you may be thinking is them depending on inflows is, yes, public service pension, by the way, is backed by the government. So it uses tax money. So it's not also yeah. a Ponzi scheme. It's using tax money to back that thing. Local superannuation is using council funds to back that thing as well. It's just that the councils are in, are in horrible financial state. So just something that you want to be, be careful of. But thank you. That is the clarity that we can actually give you before we move on to uh, the final thing. And some of the final questions, is it possible to report these to the relevant authorities uh, uh, the, so that, and can they be closed by the government? Yes, they can. You can report anything that is suspicious uh, to the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Bank of Zambia, and they will take it seriously. That is something that they will be able to do as well. Um, and somebody has, uh, what's it, Matimba? Moya has said, uh, valid point, Shadrach. Some people will follow blindly and follow a person as long as it was advertised. Very sad. That is the truth. Yeah. So just quickly now, I wanted to get uh, the second part before we be um, before we get into. Sorry, I think we may have lost Shadrach quickly there, uh, but he will be back just now. <clears throat> so let's get into the second part of this. What I call walking into a mania. Okay, this is as what I what I want you guys now to do is understand walking into a mania. Okay, now this comes from something that's called tulip mania. So I'm going to tell you the story of 1860 tulip mania, but manias and excitement are where a lot of people also take risks. So you take risk in Ponzi schemes because you're trying to make money too quickly, but then you're also brought on by social excitement. And we call this walking into a mania. Okay, so this is this is a quick story I'll tell you. Back in Holland in nine, in 1637, tulips were a rare status symbol. So people wanted to walk around with tulips because you know women would would respect men. If you were a guy and you were rich and you wanted to go and court a young woman, if you didn't come with a bouquet of tulips, she wouldn't take you seriously. So tulips were the gold watch. They were the the fancy sneakers, the, the you know the nice car, the this that. That was what tulips were. So if you didn't have them, then nobody was going to take you seriously as a rich person. So they became this culture. Now, cultivating them was difficult, so people often imported them. But at that time in 1600s, Holland became a very strong economy. It actually became the number one economy in the world, and they discovered new cultivation techniques, and there was it was the birth of science and business. Now, during that time, also, Ireland became a middle-class country. The Dutch Empire had just dethroned the Chinese Empire to become the number one economy in the world. They had strong companies and strong financial markets. They just invented financial markets. They invented the stock market. So all this is happening at the same time. So tulips boom during this time. So as a result, the demand for tulips rocketed. And now what happens is people now start thinking, oh, the price keeps going up. This is easy money to make. It's problem number one. I'm going to pause right there. Once people start thinking something is easy money, walk away, walk away. I'm telling you right now, that's where the problems are about to start. Yeah. Um, the, then they realized, so what they realized is if they could take a broken bulb. So a tulip is just a flower. It's a, it's a regular, you see the picture of it. If you take the broken bulb, you sell them. So what was happening is people now started trying to sell them because there was a rush to buy those because that's how you cultivate it. Now, as usual, greed kicked in. People started borrowing. This is problem number two. People started borrowing to buy these broken bulbs so that they could sell them, push the prices higher and keep rising higher and higher in hopes. Now they start speculating. So they've borrowed money and they're speculating on these. And the price... There we go. And the price of these tulips started going up, up and away. Now, as you can see here on this chart, you can see that in, in uh, November 9, 1636, the price of a tulip was 25 florians. Now, florians being the currency. Now, as you can see, it's moved up in just two weeks to 100. 
then 150, then it moves up to 150 until it got to about 200. And as you can see right here, just a year later, less than a year later, it collapses back. Look at this difference here. This is people who borrowed money, people. They borrowed this money. And they borrowed and at this price here. And now it's collapsed down to this price. Imagine borrowing for something that is a hundred, that was 150 kwacha. You're thinking it's going up, and now it's worth 25 kwacha. How are you going to pay that person back? So eventually, tulip mania ran out of steam. One day, the people said the price is too high. We can't buy. With, with this fragile, perishable thing, people started selling off. 90% of the tulip people went bankrupt overnight. Now, this sounds like a crazy story, but I'm going to point out areas in Zambia where this has happened. Tomato trading and maize trading. I have seen people borrowing money to go and buy tomatoes and maize so that they can sell them. Then the price collapses. And these people have a debt and a perishable they have to sell very quickly. And they're in trouble. They go bankrupt. I saw this happen with US dollars in 2015, 16, 2021, 2022. When the dollar was jumping up, people were even borrowing to go and buy dollars. Then, poof, the dollar came crashing down because the central bank intervened or President Ichirema got elected and there was so much exuberance that came in and bang, people lost money right then and there. Okay. Uh, I've seen this with village banks that offer sky high returns. People will even borrow money from work, go and put it in their village bank thinking they're going to make returns. One, two, one, two, the three guys in the village bank. <laughs> <are> nine, <laughs> one. <laughs> money is gone. Uh, constant land bubbles. I've seen people borrowing saying, and me go and borrow money. I'm going to buy land, subdivide it. In five years, it's going to be that. <laughs> Nothing. That land never takes off. Gone. Sorry, Ken. Government contracts. No, why not? If we just get into this contract here, you go and borrow money from work. This one borrows money here. You try and get into that government contract. Government never pays. One, two. Bankrupt. Okay? So, these are the examples of manias where people get excited and they go rushing into things for excitement and they get burned. So here are five things I want you all to write down. Five things I want you all to write down about manias. One, markets are about to crash when inexperienced idiots start borrowing to enter markets in hopes of becoming rich easily. When you start yeah. seeing people borrowing money to go into something because they've been heard, no, there's, there's wealth to be, walk away. Especially inexperienced yeah. people walk away. Yeah. A nuclear explosion yeah. is about to happen. Even if it's a stock, <laughs> I don't care what it is, walk away. Okay? Just run for get, life, my yeah, wait for the explosion and then come in and pick up the dead pieces after that, but walk away. The second yeah. one is financial decisions are being made in frenzied excitement. When you are seeing yeah. people excited, make it just walk away. When there's no right. methodical decision making, there's no education. At the bottom, I think you can see something that says enlighten, enlightening, and I'll just drop that later. But it says enlightening education, accurate advice, simplified structure, and finding your yes. That is a process you should be following. Okay. And, and Mnumba, just on that point, I think I like what you've mentioned there. Mnumba, guys, if you are going to invest, like Mnumba is saying, if there is no education around, guys, before you invest, please learn. Let's normalize learning. You know, I, I tell people, even in my classes, when they come, they, they think when they come to my class, I'll just look up one day and say, you know what? Yeah, the calculations, bring your money, put here, let's put here. Yeah. No, 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 that's not the way. First of all, we have to, to, to learn, to work on your mindset, your behavior, your attitudes. And then investment should be the last thing you are doing. So before you can earn, guys, please learn. Yes. Only when you've learned, then you can start spending money on investments. Because now you've understood the concept. Don't just get your money and just pour it out like that. Learn, guys, learn. Let's summarize learning first before investing. Learn. I think that's very no, important. No, it's true. Wait, no, learn, it's true. Then you can yeah. Please write that down, people. Learn before you earn. If you, if you, if you earn before learning, you're, 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 you're walking into something that's dangerous. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you are. You are, in fact, you are the very inexperienced idiot I'm talking about if you are trying to <laughs> earn before learning. So learn first. Okay, and it's a process. Um, people you you often see a sign that you're walking. 
No, it's me. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. A sign you're walking into a mania is that you'll see people rushing into industries they have no education or experience in, in hopes of getting rich overnight. Somebody has decided that they're going to be a tomato millionaire. They have never had any education or experience in tomato farming, but this year they are going to be a tomato millionaire. Aha. Wow. <laughs> That's when, and I saw oh. this when tomato prices went up. You notice, Shadrach, how everyone was coming to back offices now. No, I've got tomatoes. I've got tomatoes. And then all those people got washed out. When the tomato prices dropped, they got washed out badly. People, the fourth sign you're walking into a mania is when people fail to learn from history. I gave you the example of the U.S. dollar one. There was already a U.S. dollar flash crash that happened in 2007, 2008. There was other U.S. dollar crash that happened in... Remember your mute somehow? Yeah, yeah. I should be... Second? Yeah, right. sorry. So like, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, there we go. So having a little bit of a problem there. Microphone just got the best of me. But um, there was already a US dollar flash crash in 2006, 2007. Uh, in fact, 2005. Sorry, going into 2006. There was another US dollar flash crash that happened 2015 to 2016. 2020, 2021, 2022, people have seen two flash crashes of the US dollar, but they decide they don't, they, no, this time it's going to be different. Then it crashes again. It's like people don't, the pe when people are not learning, when they see a series of events, and I keep telling them, every time the US dollar runs up like that, the central bank will step in to act. They'll step in to counteract. And again, the central bank stepped in to counteract. And like nobody wanted to listen, so therefore they got caught on the wrong side of it. And finally, People forget there is no easy money. When people forget there's no such thing of easy money, I've got a simple statement here. It is biblical that money must come with sweat. When you break God's law by thinking money is easy, just remember God is not fond of his law being broken. He's not fond of it. And he punishes people who do it. Okay? And he'll, he'll visit you or he'll visit your children. By, by, by sweat. Telling that you shall work. These are Bible principles. You work <laughs> for your money. Nobody gives you money for free. This is why we train people for three months. So somebody can learn, understand money behaviors, money habits. Then when they invest, their mindset has been transformed. You don't just look up and say, give me your money. I'm going to give you so much. How? Mm. Learn before you end, please. Yeah, so those are those are times you're walking into a mania. And please, people, it's serious. Shadrach is saying this multiple times for a reason. If you're not learning before learning, I don't allow you to go and invest in bonds until you've actually done a full course. The reason is yeah. I don't want you messing it up. I don't want yeah. you messing it up. I want you to do it properly, okay? And I want you to be able to do it for a long time. I don't even tell you to give me your money. Anyone who does bond education will know. I don't even tell you to give me your money. I tell you, yeah. here's how you open an account. Go and do it for yourself. My work is to teach you how to go and do it for yourself. And I'm just helping you track it and make sure you make the decisions the right way. Now, finally, the six factors of persuasion. I want us to finally take this down. I want you to be able to answer this question. Why am I getting swindled? Why is somebody duping me? What am I agreeing to? And why yeah. am I agreeing to this? This yeah. comes from a book called The Science Called in Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion by Dr. Robert yeah. Caldini, who did thousands yeah. of studies on why people say yes. Now, this is a book to teach us sales and marketing, but I need you yeah. to understand every fraudster understands marketing better than anyone else. Those Absolutely. guys are all about marketing. So I yeah. need to tell you what they're doing, even at the expense of us as businesses. We use this stuff, by the way. We use yeah, this yeah. stuff whenever we're putting our sales material out. But we actually give you a substantial product, which you can still say, yes, they sold me, but the product actually works. That's the difference. Yeah. Now, the fraudster will sell you, but the product doesn't work. Or you've never actually yeah. even seen it at work. All they'll show you yeah. is the money made from it, but they'll never show you the actual thing working. So these are six signs of why people say yes to others. And I want you to assess yourself on these principles so that you can avoid falling victim to a mania or falling victim to fraud. 
So here yeah. are some of them just very quickly. Someone is likely to say yes when one, somebody has publicly committed or has publicly or voluntarily expressed commitment in writing or a symbolic gesture. You are 300% yeah. more likely to say yes. This is the number mm -hmm. one reason. It's called consistency factor. So whenever somebody's trying to, whenever it's trying, someone's trying to defraud you, they look at your yeah. activities before and they'll say, what has this person said yes to already? So if it's similar yeah. to my product, I'm going to go after that person. You were targeted yeah. because there was something you already said yes to. Maybe you have a garden in your backyard. Maybe you've already got something inclined towards farming, yeah. but you're not exactly fully there. So they can get you with saying, here's your hopes of becoming a farm millionaire without ever having to sell one. So they've already yeah. picked up on some micro activity. It's called a micro yes. You said yes to something else. Or maybe there's a small micro offering they made you, okay, which you said yes to. And once you said yes to that, you felt like you're now already committed. That's why yeah. when they give you that jongo of a product, the first time when you go and invest, <laughs> you realize there's a reason that you say that why they pay you on time first. They pay you, yeah. they'll say, just in... First, start by investing a thousand kwacha. Once you've invested a thousand kwacha and you've gotten your return back, now you think, now you think, now when they ask you, now give us 10. Okay. Now you think, okay, fine. I, they already gave me one and they gave me back. So now I can give 10. What's wrong with that? That's the game. Yeah. They always start with something small to make you consistent until one day when you get to 50, bam, they've got you. So the first <laughs> thing you have to look for is, are you being played with micro commitments first? Okay, that's the first step. Even legitimate products do that. We give you samples first. We give you small ones. They start with micro commitments. Yes, we are getting to that point of winding up. Now, some of you, uh, so they'll also say somebody who you find likable because they're either very common to you, they're very complimentary to you, or they seem very helpful. Did you say yes because the person who was selling to you was likable? Maybe they sold you on a celebrity or somebody who you connect with. Did you connect with them? And that's the reason you said yes. You didn't say yes yeah. because the investment is sound. You said yes because the person who sold it to you was likable. That's another reason why you can easily get swindled. The third one, which is a very strong one that's used a lot, is fear of missing out. OK, yeah. seeing other people are making money and you're being told, ah, walala wasala, you fall asleep, you lose out. That's the main yeah. one. OK, fear yeah. of missing out. It's called the consensus factor. Did you jump in because you saw everyone around you with tomatoes, with dollars, with 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 these 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 scams or whatever it is? Did you jump in because you saw other people joining in that you need yeah. to ask yourself very carefully? OK, the yeah. second thing is, do you feel uh, indebted to these people were they so nice to you did they give you free things so many free things that you yeah. thought ah oh, man i just have to invest or i just have the to nice. give these people money the nice. did they throw so much free stuff at you that you got confused and thought ah oh, me if i don't invest then it just seems wrong reciprocity that's what pe that's one of the strongest factors people use a guilt inside of you by giving you yeah. so much free stuff free this yeah. free that free sample this free that that eventually you just say okay let me just do it and then you this get is I, mean, I, I think I think I very stand for my appeal that when you pay, you pay attention. Yeah. I've read a lot of free stuff, guys. It's not you know, I, I, it's not that I'm gonna get it a lot of free stuff. There, there's something about paying for a service because you're going to, to be more alert, right? You're going to learn something properly, you're going to understand, but these guys they make they make it look like you are so special to them. They give you VIP treatment. Who are you? So, so there's, there's this kind of treatment they give you, which just makes you feel, you know, I just have to, these people are nice. You know, they seem nice, they are polite. These guys understand human psychology. Yeah. They understand, they play, they, you know, they play to your emotions, your feelings. It's like, it's like you are the, the only person existing in the world. And this is how even young boys sleep with my women in Mumbai. What do they do? They show them that they're the only ones who, like, they, like this one is more understanding than you. I, I, I met a professor in Mumbai, he told me, the science of all these people, they say they make the, the, the vulnerable person feel like he's the only one in the world existing. Like your husband, your fiance is doing nothing good to you. Like, like you are, they, they make you feel understood. Not that you are, you are so special, but because they have noticed your vulnerability, you want somebody to understand you. You're always complaining about your husband. You're always complaining about your fiance. So what do they do? They use that weakness to make you feel special, make you feel understood. And then before you know it, 
you messed up, you are divorced, they will disappear. It's the same thing with scammers. They make you feel yeah. special, feel understood. You're a priority to them. Before you know it, you're on your own. And just just quickly remember, before this goal like stuff ended, a friend of mine had put a is it a two thousand, whatever it is. He even got back a nine thousand, <coughs> but he told me, Shabik is real. I've gotten like I said, you know what, no matter how much you get, I will never lift a finger and put money into something I don't know the money is most time. Do you know what happened, Mjumba? The following morning, I saw one to post and just says, go like, and people were, cry, were, were crying. And I, 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 I called my friend, you are very fortunate to have gotten back your money yesterday. Because today this thing is off, and he tells me, Shadri, I'm sorry for wanting to convince you. I, was, I, said, I said, there's no way you can convince me this thing. So I have to know where is my money going, how is it multiplying. But this go like stuff is not making any sense to me. I can't lift his finger. And I never did. I had people calling me, I've made so much. I said, you know what? Good for you. I'm not lifting a finger on this thing. So guys, I think that's a very good point to remember. Yeah, no. And just quickly, in, in terms of the last two things, um, somebody who you feel you can trust, often they will use borrowed credibility of people who you trust, either just like Shadrach has talked about his friend or celebrity. They'll use either friends or celebrities and that yeah. credibility of somebody you can trust, or they will use and authority. It doesn't have to yeah. be an authority exactly because sometimes people are like in my field, if you, if somebody comes to me with saying, no, I want to offer investments to people, I'll tell them, go away, I've got a license to protect. I'm not going to give yeah. you my page to start I'm utilizing. Sure so they'll I, use... I, I, I'm a qualified professional. I don't want to lose yeah. my license because of you. Why should I, why yeah. should I use you as a platform? I have a reputation. So the... <laughs> I have ambitions too. I'm not going to... These Facebook experts don't have licenses in to lose. Yeah. They just go exactly. out of these podcasts and then they make you invest. You lose your money. You don't care. They care about their stomach. Do due diligence, guys. Please. So even even the even the people who you follow. That's why I said, be careful of somebody who does not have a. Uh, they don't have a license to protect, or they don't have you're a right. professional standing or a business to protect. That if they give you the wrong advice, it'll actually harm their business and their license. So if there's no professional buffer to, for them to protect when they're issuing you advice and get, telling you try this or try that or do that or do that they can lead you into a, into the hands of a wolf, okay? And there's nothing that will happen to them should they lose that. So even they will use the names of people or the faces of people who have got no licensing to come in front of you and tell you. So that's the use borrowed credibility to buy your trust. So ask yourself, did I invest in this because somebody who I trusted or a borrowed figure of borrowed credibility came in and said, go ahead and do it. Then finally, fear of losing out. OK, you're told if you don't invest now, if you don't invest now, you miss out like this is the window you will miss. If that is the reason you're making a decision, they're rushing you into trying to make a decision, because if you miss out, be OK with missing out. So please yeah. take a snapshot of these six points of why people say yes, because that is actually going to affect you uh, in future and will actually help you see uh, the best way to actually do this. So now this is. That's me. I'm not, <clears throat> let me close this down quickly uh, and just see if there are any lasting questions uh, that we have here. We've got a few comments here from people. Here. Thank you for so as many of you as joining us. We're going to wind up here and just take a few uh, a few questions just to wind up here. Um, Annie, Annie, uh, sorry, Ann checks uh, wrote here. Uh, I still remember how they treated me well. They even gave me coffee. It's good that you are now opening my mind. I was once a victim. And uh, trust me, it's happened to so many people. And don't even get sure. That one has hit so many people. Uh, Moses, uh, a lot of people are giving us the thanks for the looks. Um, I'm an example of fear of losing out. This is somebody who's written here. Uh, memory never has said yeah. I'm an example of, of fear of losing out. And people have been, trust me, that has happened to so yeah. many people. Uh, real marketeers, yeah. uh, somebody's yeah. written here. Uh, real marketeers are not transaction oriented, but relationship oriented. <laughs> Trust me, even those crooks are relationship oriented. They are very good at this stuff. Hey, they are very good at this stuff. Um, people have actually put here, Chadrak, they've learned from noted uh, learning before earning. Thank you very much. Everybody should be putting it here. Uh, I love the fact that you're insisting on learning before earning. Another one has said that here. Thank you very much, Matimba, for that. Um, and we're getting a lot more. In, we're getting a lot of people who are understanding insights here. 
Uh, Jay Jack has said, there's a company running farming contracts. What's your take? We've been talking about it the whole time. About that company. <laughs> That's talking right. about Ponzi schemes, the deciding for yourself what we've talked about, Jay, we refuse for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you will not do this for us, but... <laughs> Then they'll start so coming after company. us. We're giving that you can go and, 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 and analyze for yourself and see if this thing genuine or not. It's up to you, not to us, no. Yeah. No, I was, and it should be anyone. By the way, these things change form all the time. Um, uh, Matimba said you should be hired by NAPSA for the explaining you've done by NAPSA. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much that you actually understand that. Um, one question has come here by Lloyd. So one okay. question has come by Lloyd. Won't the newly approved partial withdrawal of pension funds move NAPSA into a risky zone, as you defined, Ms. Mutwale? Uh, won't the outflows be more than the inflows? It depends on what they put down. If they put down that it's only 20%, and yeah. if they put uh, whatever mechanisms they put, I think everyone should understand when it comes to this NAPSA withdrawal thing, the devil is in the detail. The, 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 it's, it's about the details. So if, if it's easy to withdraw, then maybe, but... It's also about the percentage of the amount they're going to allow you to partially withdraw. If they're only allowing you to withdraw 15% and they're saying only by the time you turn 36 and under this certain condition, then it's not as easy as you may Even, think. think yeah. But if they say half of it can be withdrawn, but the money, it depends also on the inflows of NAPSA. How much are they getting in terms of flows coming in? So that's just one more uh, point that has to be uh, made there. And I, then just I, finally... I, I, um, I Yes, Pardon? No, I was just putting uh, one final point. I think people were just giving us a uh, heads up on how they enjoyed the show. People, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, the main things that are up here, please take note of them. One, watch out for the red flags of a Ponzi scheme. The number one reason is if money going in is what's keeping it alive. And two, if this thing cannot be explained how it grows money, if it can't be explained, then walk away. And then also, people who are handling your money, I want to just leave one other thought I think we left out here, Shadrach. If, you don't, if you're not very wealthy yourself, don't experiment. Go and use conventional things to build wealth. Only very yeah. wealthy people yeah. can go and risk one, because go and ask yourself, what do wealthy people do? Do wealthy people go and remove all their conventional assets and then say, I'm putting all my 50 million in these farming? They don't do such stuff. Okay. Wealthy people will have 50 million. They'll take 500,000 of their 50 million and they'll try it in there. And if it burns, they're fine. That's 1% of their wealth. They don't care. It's, it's, it's okay. They still have the other 99%. I, I, you I, I, will take your whole 100,000 or 50,000 and you will put your whole wealth in there and burn it alive. And then you'll start saying, what happened to me? So if you don't have the capacity to lose money, which means you're wealthy, perhaps try and avoid these things as much as possible until you have built that capacity. If you don't have about 3 million kwacha in wealth, perhaps stay away from these highly experimental things until you can say, okay, now I can try yeah. and put a little bit in there. That's what I would say. Anyway, Shadrach, please. Uh, and, and guys, just uh, as, as we wind up, I want to say thank you so very much. You guys have been asking us constructive questions and we are very grateful. You are an amazing audience. And this is why I'm so proud of my of our audience because you know these are people that want to do the right thing. The moment you take learning seriously, making money becomes reasonably easy because they're going to see a lot of genuine ways of how you can make money without being swindled. And you guys have been with us for one hour, 30 minutes. And we say thank you so very much for being so, you know, for being so selfless, for, for, for showing us the willingness to learn. This is motivation for us. Guys, this information, somebody would pay so much to acquire. But we are here with Munyumba to just share it for free at no cost because we care, all right? No feelings attached. All we just want is to ensure that your money is protected. You invest with real people, real businesses. And look at the economy before you invest. Now we are looking at globalization. Why would somebody promise you that if you give me 50,000 kwacha, I'm going to give you 1.5 million in just maybe so, so many months? There's a globalization, people. Banks around the world are increasing interest on borrowing. The economy is crashing. 
Why, why is this guy going to get all these money to just come and put it into your laptop? You know what? Go and enjoy with your family. For what? Ask yourself this question. Why would somebody work so hard to make you rich? Why? If they can multiply 50,000 according to 1.5, why can't they do it for themselves? Why should yeah. they make you rich? Why? That's the question, guys. So please look at all those things. And if it's a uh, registration number, just as, as we conclude in a minute, guys, just because somebody is registered with Pakra, that's the only they are legitimate. No. There are lots of Dongolistic companies right now that are registered with Pakra. There are lots of companies right now that are, are Pakra documents. Ask these questions. Which professional board are you registered with? Who is your regulator? All right? Who's your auditor? Which old firm audits you? Who is your auditor? And we, so you can know the regulator, the audit firm. When do you get your license? How long have you been in operation? What's your capital base? Who are your employees? How long have they been employed? When did you start active operations? How am I going to how, how are you going to invest this money? Do you have any bonds? Do you have any stock? What 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 is it that you have that gives you more money? Where do you get your money from? Because people ask me, Shad, where do you get your money from? What businesses do you do? So it's important to ask this question. Don't just say, you know what, because you see some gallible celebrities taking photos, what do you do? Say, it's no, these guys are hungry. Some of them are just famous but are hungry. They need money, people. They need money. We have a lot of famous hungry celebrities in this country. They are willing to, to put you at risk just to satisfy their stomach. They are willing to go and take photos with food stars. They don't ask questions. They don't ask questions. They just take photos. And because they have this following of a lot of gullible people, inexperienced idiots, they can remember code them. They are just going out because this celebrity was taking a photo. I'm going to go and invest. No, guys. These celebrities, some of them can't even read. They are just famous because, you know, they, were, they did something so useless and they were famous for, being, for just doing nothing. All right? So please, guys, take it upon yourself. Making money is not an easy thing to do. Making money has got some logic, and the Bible says, wait, don't let your hand rest. So you're sitting in the morning, all right? You shall quit. Why should you be getting money millions for free? There's a way of making money genuine. So don't just watch the and keep people are taking for you. Ask, learn, research, pay financial advisors to advise you. Don't you come for you're willing to go and buy alcohol. Pay an advisor to, to take you to the void, because you're going to be swindled. It's not a good thing. I think, guys, mm. I think that, that, that's the way we would like to just today, and we, we appreciate, guys. You know, I'm getting emotional because, you know, people are getting swindled in your Every single no, let day. Me, let me, let right? me also just okay, put one, one, last, one last point to this. Um, even to you people here, and I say this to people who rush to defend things. You know, the reason why I was standing up yeah. here is because there's also a life and death element when it comes. And I, I think some of you read something I had put up earlier. You know, if you go and give someone financial advice and it turns out to be wrong and that person loses their life savings, you know, what are you going to do if that person kills themselves? There are plenty of men who have hanged themselves from poor financial situations, yeah. terrifying financial situations where they are scared to tell their wives or their family that they've lost the family land or they've lost this, they've lost that. They went and borrowed money against, uh, against the land of their family or their house of their wife and children, and they can't face their kids and they go and hang themselves. Okay. These things happen, by the way. So, I, and I, it's because we, yeah. whenever I've been telling people, please be careful of these things, someone say, no, but they are fine, they are fine. And I asked them, I said, are you an advisor? He says, no, I'm not. Do and you yeah, have the adequate papers? Be fair, because if somebody dies, no, just one second, if somebody dies and goes, because they went and put hundreds of thousands in there and they've lost their life savings and they go and take their life, will you be able to stand in front of their family? And be able to say, no, no, I gave credible advice. I don't know what he did. It was it. Yeah. Will you be able to do that? Yeah. If you cannot do that, stay That's away because you are giving life or death no. advice to a human being who, when they take their lives, you don't have the yeah. guts, nor do you have the professional standing to explain why you said what you said and why you drove them into that. Yeah. So please, people, stick to things you can easily understand. 
things that are regulated, stick to things. Learn slowly. Somebody has said, yeah, but do we have to go to school? No. Taking a course, sitting with an advisor, going in slowly, making sure it's regulated, asking the correct questions, being structured over time before you start flowing people into something. Just take it slow. And I would always say this, always find advisors with the heart of a teacher. Always look for advisors yeah. who are looking to teach you first before they make you start yeah. something. That is the first yeah. trigger yeah. point you should have to understand. Somebody you can trust will yeah. spend time teaching you and showing you so that the thing that is going to multiply your money is not going to be complex. That's what we mean. Not to a point no, where you I'm can't even explain it. So that's what I was just trying to say when yeah. I was saying, be careful of drawing people into things because you will have to stand as to why you lure that person into that because that's what you've done. You've lured a person into something. Will you stand before their wife, their yeah. widowed wife, and their orphaned children that their father took their life because you yeah. decided that you wanted to convince yeah. someone on something? So take it very slow when doing that as well. And that yeah. is where I want, I, I will now leave it now permanently there. You can rewind this, people watch through it, go through it multiple times. Build your momentum. Invest in regular things, people. Regular. If you've never done investing, start in the conventional things. People are going to tell you, oh, yes, you've missed out. Fine. It's okay. Miss out. Because you also want to be the one who misses out when they get swindled. That's what you I'm, want to do. I'm, you have I'm, to be the one who missed out. The reason why you saw me start that program for three months for mentoring people is because I feel the pain. I see people being swindled every single time. And I said, how do I help somebody just to learn? before they can invest. Because it's, it's important before you end, guys, please learn. Learn. Don't get your hard end man, just go and destroy it. Away. Please learn. Learn some learn how money works. Learn the rules of investment. All right. These guys will see most of them on Facebook have no licenses to lose. They can just say anything, write up reactions. People are, people are, that is being evil guys. I want to call my BP number. I lose that twenty thousand because I BP are for good. Don't advise people to go and put money where you don't know how the money is multiplying. Just if you are, you are, you are willing to, to, to risk, risk your money, do it alone. Don't bring your friends along, please. If you have so much, so much money to lose and to give out to others, go and do it alone. Don't go and get, bring your neighbors. And you know what happens? People have problems. And the ones even being swindled. Why don't you protect your money? You have problems, but you can't protect your money. What is the logic here? Don't involve your friends in the schemes. Do it alone. People have got families. But they got a beat people when people feed up. Because of you, you are you are persuading persuading somebody to go and invest with you. Don't do it. Please, guys. I think remember let's yeah. end here before you get more emotional about this issue. No, that's all right. So Jeron, thank you for joining us. Um you will you catch us a few times? Shadrach to everyone. Yeah. Have a wonderful evening to everyone and God bless. Please smash us a comment here. Give us a like. Give us a share. And we'll hear from you soon. Have a wonderful day to all.